Picture this. It's 2.15, your classroom is in chaos, and if you make your kids do another mind map, character sketch, or anything involving bullet points, they're going to mutiny, and it's going to look like Lord of the Flies or that scene from Hook in here. The solution may lie in XMind. XMind is free downloadable mind mapping software for Mac or Windows. It's easy to learn, fun to work with, and tech-savvy kids will be able to make something much more interesting and interactive than the typical mind map or graphic organizer. Once you have your new XMind file up, you want to find your central topic. Let's rename it Heroes in Harry Potter. Now, this will be what our map is about. Let's add a topic. Going to Insert, Topic. Let's right-click, and we can type whatever we like in there. Let's put Harry Potter. Again, you can also highlight that main topic box, click, push enter, and another topic will come up. Let's just add in a few more of those here. Now let's say we want to add a little bit more information. We can come over, click on the box, head up to insert from file, an image over here, one of my favorite pictures is this shot of Harry Potter, so let me add it in right there. To resize, it's very easy. Just drag a corner, click, and drag it in until you have a size you're happier with. That should be okay. Much better. Now to add notes to the side, again, we go to Insert, Subtopic, and type in whatever we'd like. It'll automatically come into the box here. As many times as you like, you can add information in. It comes up right to, the, right to the side. Now let's say that we want to change the layout of our map. We can come over to the Properties tab in the far right here. Now, if nothing is highlighted, we'll have the properties of structure, as well as text, shape, line, background, anything that's going to have to do with the general document. Let's choose a different layout. We can go to Fishbone left or right headed. You can go back to that map or a spreadsheet. Now this could be very useful. Uh, you can create the file and then send it to your students. They could resave it, adding their own information in, and the chart will grow as they add. We have other options, this logic chart. But I think for our purposes, an organizational chart going down will work best. That looks nice and neat. Now Harry, Hermione, and Ron all tend to get into trouble together, so let's group them together. We can go to this insert one more time and choose a summary. Now that gives us a little tab that connects all three of those without creating a new topic. We drag it out, label the relationship, the three musketeers. And that's getting a little bit long. So let's adjust it. Let's take this green tab, drag it in until we have a size we like, and hit enter. And that's it. Now that we have a hero's chart, we need a villain chart too. Let me build that up very quickly here. Alright, now we have our villain side, but that font is looking a little bit small. I don't want to go through and change all of them one by one, so I'm going to come up to the menu and select Brothers, which selects all of the children of that parent uh, heading there, and change the font. There we go. Much better. In some mapping activities, there may be a character that doesn't fit into one of two categories, and to address that, we can just start another floating topic. Make this one Severus Snape. Make that font a little bit bigger. There we go. And I want to add another picture in there. He's definitely in my favorite pictures. Drag that box in one more time. And there we go. Now this is sort of a neat tool. If you come down and right click on that again, just the same way we've been getting to this menu, Go to the label, and we can actually give this topic a label that won't interfere with the rest of the chart. Now, no one knows whether he's to be trusted or if he's a very bad man, so let's, let's label him that way to explain why he's not in the other groups. Let's add some information about him. 
This is where it gets versatile. We can choose to insert video in the same way that we put a picture in. We go up to that insert. Here we're going to choose attachment. And I happen to have a deleted scene from the Half-Blood Prince movie that shows what kind of a man Snape truly is. So we'll connect that to the topic. There we go. Delete that extra one. And if we click on the QuickTime icon, it will actually pop up a window that we can watch that clip through. And there it is. So this is a really great way to bring in a variety of resources, not just text, not just pictures. We can bring in multimedia as well. We can bring in web resources. And we can show complicated relationships. So here we right-click, go up to Insert, Relationships, and we'll actually have an arrow that we can drag up to Dumbledore here. And we can enter text about that relationship. Uh, he's a spy and professor of potions. So this is a really great tool to use with a complicated novel, uh, with relationships that maybe get a little bit twisted. It can be non-linear. It doesn't have to fit into a chart, and this might be a way for students to make sense of it creatively, um, and in a way that doesn't involve using a lot of paper, in a way that can bring in all of these sources they're drawing information from, movies, photographs, websites, articles. Uh, it's just a place that can really bring things together very nicely. There's one last feature I'm going to show you on Xmine, and that's the marker function. So let's zoom in up here, go up to insert. Uh, first we're going to highlight the topic that we'd like to insert this on, and scroll down to that marker tab. There are a variety of marks, priority buttons, smiley faces, task markers, flags, stars, half stars, and an assortment of others. So we're going to go down to these others. Let's say we want to mark the people who are killed throughout these novels. There are a lot of deaths in the last Harry Potter. So we just add that marker. Okay, he's killed, but he does come back to life, so we'll give him another one. Those are the basics of XMind, how to create your first media project, add multiple medias and format to your heart's content. My favorite things about it are that it is free and it is easy to learn. This can be a buggy program on different operating systems, and it may not work for all teachers, but if this works for you, run with it. It's a fun tool that creates interactive, polished presentations much better than just another graphic organizer.